This kind of speed ramp effect has been going viral for a long time and I wanted to break down exactly how to do it in Final Cut Pro. If you look at the video again, what makes it unique is that not only do you have these really fast speed ramps, the focus of each shot is locked onto the middle of the frame. That's what I'm going to teach you to create in this video. So let's start by going over a few basic shooting tips to get the best results, how I prep my music and timeline for an edit like this, and then I'll take you step by step through the editing process to create the spiral speed ramp effect. You can shoot this handheld on a gimbal with a phone or a camera, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the technique and how smooth you can move. The two most important things are, number one, you want to keep the focus of each shot in the center of the frame. You can do that by turning the grid on your phone on or keeping your focus point on your camera set to center. The goal is to get the focal point of the shot to stay in the center of the frame. And even though you might not be able to get it perfectly, as long as you can get it pretty close, you'll still get really good results. I used my Sony ZV-E1 on a gimbal and that gave me really smooth results. And secondly, you want to shoot in slow motion. I shot at 120 frames per second in 4K. The first thing I do when I'm editing anything that's music focused, as opposed to something that's dialogue driven, is to create a cut down of the music track I'm working with. I've taken this track and cut it down to around 10 seconds. I have another two videos where I talk about music editing tricks, which I'll link to down below. So you can go ahead and watch those next. But once I've done that, I like to create placeholders to see how many shots I need and to visualize the pacing of the edit. This is an optional step, but I'll do that by hitting Control T to add a title. I'll change the text to one and copy and paste it a few times, increasing the number each time. I'll add all of them to a group by hitting Command G and then I usually play it through and use the shortcut option and the right square bracket to trim each placeholder. That gives me an idea of when I'll be cutting from one shot to another. And I'll also know how many good shots I need for this edit. By now, you might have recognized the song. It's not a typical royalty-free stock track. It's a mainstream song. It's Bangarang from Skrillex. And it's licensed and fully monetized on this video. And that's all thanks to Licked, the sponsor of this video who've completely changed the game for creators like us. If you've ever spent too long searching for music that matches your edit or settled for something bland to avoid copyright strikes, then you know the struggle. With Licked, I get access to over 1.4 million tracks, including real music from artists you know and love. This isn't just a, it sounds like Skrillex or it sounds like Post Malone music. It's actually those artists or whoever you want. It gets better. You can monetize your videos with this mainstream music with no copyright strikes and no revenue loss. You just subscribe, grab a license and upload. Licked even crushes any copyright claims before you go live. And here's the crazy part. Using recognizable music can actually boost your video's performance. And I'm talking more views, more watch time, more likes. Good music pulls people in, recognizable music keeps them there. Licked is giving you an exclusive seven day free trial, including unlimited stock music and one free premium track. Just hit the link in the description down below to try it out risk-free. If you cancel before seven days, you pay nothing. So now I've imported my shots and I've trimmed out all the unnecessary bits to create my shot selection, which is essentially all of these clips. I'll play back one or two so you can see the raw footage. This is at normal speed. You can see I've tried to keep the text in the center. Here's another one where I've tried to keep the bolt in the center. It's a little bit shaky, but even a clip like that can work. And here I've tried to keep the handlebar in the center as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is select all of these clips and I'm going to head over to the speed rig timing window and select automatic speed. What that does is it slows each clip down to as slow as it can go without dropping any frames. You'll notice I had a shortcut set up for that. So you could also head into Final Cut Pro command sets, customize, and then search for automatic speed to set up your own shortcut. Now that that's done, I'll keep all of these clips selected and I'll turn stabilization on for all of the clips and I'll set the smoothing to the maximum. Now there's a free way and a paid option to create the locked on stabilization effect that you see in this viral speed ramp effect. So let's start with the free way. I have a detailed video on how to create the locked on stabilization effect in Final Cut Pro for free, which I'll link to down below, but here's a quick rundown. I'll first hold down option and create a copy of my clip. And then on the first clip, I'm going to invert the scale by typing in minus and I'll scale it up to 125%. Then I'll scroll down here and add a tracker clicking on the plus icon and I'll select this bit of text right here. I'll just scale this box down 
something like that should do. And then I'll hit analyze. Now that the track is done, I can move this copied clip on top of it. And then I'll open up the transform tools here. You can click on the down arrow if you don't see it. And then I'll head over to this drop down arrow and I'll set my tracker to this new object track that I created. The first thing I'll do is I'll click on the square icon over here and I'll remove the rotation parameter. And I'll make sure that the rotation is set to 180 or zero, depending on your shot, just to make sure that this is orientated correctly. And then I can deselect this transform box. And now we've locked onto that text. If you're shooting an S-Log and your track deviates from your initial position, what might help is to first color grade the clip and it doesn't have to be perfect. You literally want to create a little bit more contrast so that the tracker has more contrasting information to work with. But you would obviously need to do that before tracking or you'd have to track again. And then you would select both clips and hit Option G to create a compound clip and you could label this number one, for example. The easy way is to use a plugin. Pixel Film Studios has one, but Motion VFX also has one now, and I think it's more accurate, faster, and easier to use, so that's my locked on plugin of choice. You obviously need Motion VFX's Design Studio subscription for this. I'll leave a link down below. So if you have Design Studio, you can open up the M Extension browser. Hey, look who it is. And then you can come over here and type lock on and search for the locked on stabilization effect. And then I'll just drag and drop that on top of my clip and I can close the M Extension browser. Now you'll need to extend this to the duration of your clip. And since we have a whole lot of clips we're working with, I'm going to hit Shift Z and then I'm going to extend this all the way across my clips. And with it selected, I can just use the up arrow and Command B to cut this for every instance of the clip. I find that this is a nice quick way to do it. And with that first one selected, I can head over to my inspector window and turn my tracker toolbar on. I'll move this box over the text here. I'll probably just try select the D and the B, something like that. And then I'll hit this forward button here to analyze forwards. Depending on the length of your clip and how difficult it is to track your selection, it might take a few seconds or a few minutes. And once that's done, I'll move forward in time somewhere around here just to see how well it's being stabilized and I'm going to turn off the frame border clones. Essentially what that does is creates extra pixels so that you don't have these black edges, but I prefer to scale the footage up. So I'll do something like that. And in the view menu here, I'm going to turn on my horizon so that I can change my footage offset here to put what I tracked directly in the center on this horizon overlay. And for safety, in case I've messed up some of the edges, I like to just turn this frame border clones back on. I'll scrub through this quickly so you can see we now have that area that we tracked perfectly in the center of the frame. Then I'll go ahead and select the effect and the clip and hit option G to create a compound clip and I'll call this shot one. And then I'd move on to the next shot. Instead of making you watch me do this for every shot, I'm just going to skip ahead. Now you'll see that every single shot has a clear focus point in the center like that. I'll bring the first shot on top of my music and it's really important to plan how we go from one shot to the other. In this case, I want to start zoomed out, zoom into the text, and then I want to reverse that movement so that I have a constant zoom out motion into the second shot. To do that, I'll just hold down option and copy this clip. On the first clip, I'll select it and head over to my retiming menu and reverse the clip. I found with the pacing of this track, I need around six frames to be in a slow motion state. So I'll go to the end of this clip and go back with the left arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six times. And I'll hit shift B to create a speed cut. On the next clip, I'll hit the down arrow and I'll go forward one, two, three, four, five, six frames as well. And I'll hit shift B to create a speed cut. Then I can reverse the speed by 20 times and I can do that again on the second clip as well. And then I'll bring the two shots together and zoom in so we can tweak it. And I'll play this back to see where we want the slow motion section to occur. I think from where he says the word bass is where we wanted to zoom out. So I'll bring this shot in over here and I'll speed this clip up. So we go really quickly into the second shot and then I'll speed this clip up as well. Now these are guides, they don't have to be perfect. I can see here that this one was a frame too early and I kind of want this to cut right here on that beat. So that's why I've extended this by an extra frame. So you'll see for the first shot, we now have a slower speed ramp into the slow motion and then we reverse that movement and we move really quickly back out to the wide, which will help us move into the second shot. And that looks like this. Let's move on to the second shot. I'll go ahead and grab it, zoom out a little bit. And I know for this one, I'm going to follow on with this zoom out movement. And I want to zoom out to somewhere like this. And then because we're always thinking of how we're going to transition to the next shot, we're going to continue the zoom movement out into this movement. So I'll go somewhere in the middle of the clip, somewhere halfway, and I'll hit shift B to create a speed cut. I'll move forward six frames with the right arrow and I'll hit shift B again. And like before, I'll just speed this up by 20 times on both sides. And I'll zoom in again. 
So somewhere halfway over here is where we want the slow motion section to take place. So I'll just speed this clip up and I'll speed this up as well. Again, I'll speed that up so you don't have to watch me doing every single one. 15 minutes later. And at this point, you'll notice that these shots don't always line up with these cuts. Sometimes it works to move a shot a frame or two before the beat to help it transition and fully land on the slow motion part on the beat. The next thing I'm going to do to sell this effect is select all of these clips, hit Command R to bring up my retiming bar, and I'm going to add motion blur to all of these speed ramps. I have a free motion blur effect that you can download. I'll leave a link down below. And I'm just going to select this medium motion blur and drag it on top of my clip. I'll drag it to the end of my timeline and I'll explain what's happening with this compound clip in just a second but first I'm going to select the motion blur layer and I just want to trim it at the end of the ramp somewhere over there and I'm using the shortcut keys option and the right square bracket to trim it and command B to trim the beginning of the motion blur clip. This allows me to go really quickly and just add the motion blur to where all the speed ramp sections are. You could apply the motion blur to all of the clips but I like to only apply it to the sections that need the motion blur so in other words just the speed ramping sections. Now if I scrub through here slowly you'll see we have this really nice motion blur happening to help us transition from one clip to the other. Because I don't need these titles anymore, you can select all of this and hit Option Command and the down arrow to overwrite it to the primary storyline. And then with my playhead at the beginning of the timeline, I'll hit Option A and this will add an adjustment clip. Now this is a newer feature in Final Cut Pro 11. So if you haven't updated and got that adjustment clip, you can also download a free adjustment layer, which I'll also link to down below. On this adjustment clip, I'm just going to do a quick grade and I'll just use my talking head preset for my ZVE1, which has a couple of effects on it, including a conversion LUT, we don't need the vignette, and it has my custom fire and ice LUT. And lastly, what I did is I copied this shot eight and because it has speed ramping on it, I hit option G and I called it shot eight outro. And then I went into the retiming options and reversed the clip. This last frame over here is the same as the first frame on this clip. So I just sync that up to the end, trim this off slightly, and I'll replace the one I currently have over here. And I did that so that it loops seamlessly on social media. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe because we do fun Final Cut Pro things here. One more time, here is the final edit looped. Speaking of looping videos, if you want to learn how to create the infinite loop effect, then you've got to watch this video next.